Hare Krishna. This is not, I repeat, this is not a spur of the moment video. This video was inspired by someone named A.A. A. Austin Bay from my Facebook. He's a good, good person, you know, got a lot of knowledge. There's a lot of knowledgeable people on my Facebook, you know. So he had inboxed me some questions and I was like, man, those are, those are really good questions and stuff because um, <clears throat> I've been meaning to do a new YouTube video lately anyway. So I'm like, all right, this, this brother sent me some questions that, that really, they're good. I'm going to try to, um, first of all, reiterate the questions for you. And then I'm going to try to address the questions one by one to the best of my ability. Of course, there's always going to be things that will be left out or things that needed to be added. So in that event, I'll put some links in the description box when I get a chance, particularly for PrabhupadaVani.org. So that's your spelling Prabhupada, P-R-A-B-H-U-P-A-D-A-V-A-N-I, PrabhupadaVani.org. In there, you'll find a whole bunch of his lectures. You'll find his lectures, his morning walks on subjects from the Srimad Bhagavatam to the Bhagavad Gita. He does lectures on things like this. And it's, I'm talking about billions of tons, billions of lifetimes of information is on that website. Like what Prabhupada did was nothing short of amazing. We've had a lot of erudite scholars in the modern age. We've had a lot of philosophers. We've had a lot of people who know a lot of things, man. But nobody put out the volume of work that Prabhupada did. You know, people like to compare Malachi York. And they say he's the author of over 80 books and or 100 books. I don't know what the number is. And he has done an impressive amount of work. However, in about 1990... 91 and it wasn't no secret so it's not like oh caprice you revealing secrets that people ain't no there ain't nobody busting shots at me for revealing what dr york chose to reveal to us himself so he used to take we used to go upstate every weekend to see dr york and you know we used to handle certain business but we also had these enclosed classrooms that he would take his his young disciples a bunch of young females and males we was about 17 18 19 at the time and he used to teach us advanced teachings that even the Nuwabians don't have right now. And this is before it crossed over to Nuwabians. But one day he took us to his house, inside his house, and he showed us the computer banks. And he explained to us that the girls are the ones who write the books. They gather up the information. And he straight told them, if it does not fit with your philosophy, the information that you've gather, gathered, if it doesn't fit with your philosophy, squeeze it, crunch it, crash it, and make it fit. That's basically what he told us. Make it fit. He told us that he told them that in the writing process of the book. So, I mean, you can, can say what you want, but a lot of Dr. York's information has been borrowed from other sources not making it any less legitimate but it definitely makes it less direct so you have to understand that and with that i'm going to jump into the questions that were posed to me on the inbox i'm not quoting them verbatim because i don't have a verbatim kind of memory but if i'm wrong trust me aa austin bay will get on the comments and let us know that i was wrong so the first question he posed was why is this, besides the fact that Prabhupada wrote this version of Bhagavad Gita called Bhagavad Gita as it is, what makes it more authorized or what makes it so special, what makes it better than any other version? Because a lot of times on Facebook I'm harping, or should I say I'm, I'm pointing out the fact of how important it is to read Srila Prabhupada's original unedited version. It was edited, but only while he was alive. So it's authorized by him. It's the version he used till his last day on the planet Earth. So if there was a problem with it, or if Prabhupada, Prabhupada was meticulous record keeper. So if there was a problem with that version of the Bhagavad Gita, he would have straight told his disciples, listen man, 
I want you to do this, that, and the third. And he would have left it in writing so that when he left his body, people would have known Prabhupada's last will was to change the bag of Agita. So if you take the two bag of Agitas and put them side by side, the gold cover version, which is, I don't even know his name. I get their names mixed up and I don't like throwing other people under the bus that don't have nothing to do with it. It's not Jaya Pataka Swami. I don't think so. I think it's actually Jaya Dwaita Swami who was the one who decided that Prabhupada's original version was no longer fit for the masses. So he made up his own version. And once again, that's cool. But you got to take Prabhupada's name off of that book because he ain't write that book. If you put the two versions side by side, it's all over the YouTube. You'll be amazed. So many Hare Krishna devotees and so many students of higher philosophy and Eastern philosophy are reading the gold cover written by, once again, Jaya Dwaita. But look it up because I could be wrong. Okay, I don't want to put nobody under the bus. But I think it's Jaya Dwaita who has his own version. And, and millions of people are reading this version. And it's a pretty good version. I, I read it myself. It kind of brought me closer to Krishna it brought me more and it it got me more interested in reading Prabhupada's original literature okay I, I pronounced the literature in a British context because you know Brexit and all of that Britain just exited and the whole world was about to collapse last Friday I mean we thought it was the end of the world I was so damn happy man I was like yes as soon as the devil's conquering oppressive system falls down that's when the foot comes off of the neck of my people see i don't have any misillusions about that i don't believe that this man his nature is going to change i don't believe his system's going to change and i don't believe he loves us in no way shape or form even in krishna consciousness us black body people still have to deal with a lot of the nonsense it's not as intense as it is out there in the world but you trust me a lot of so-called Hare Krishna devotees have their racist views it ain't even a game and we're not even gonna go into the origin of where they get these racist views from that's another video but let's get back to the subject so if you put the two versions of the Bhagavad Gita side by side there are over 5,000 changes in that gold cover bag of Agita. Okay. These are not authorized by Prabhupada. So you can keep that version. You can read it. You can study from it. But guess what? At least just take the name of Prabhupada off. And be like edited by Jaya Dwaita Swami. You know just do that. Just do that. You know. And, and then many people will be satisfied. Because that's plagiarism. You can't say that you're taking another man's work. You got to put your name on it. And say, I, you know, you just, just be specific. There's rules and laws to this. Anyway, what makes this Prabhupada's version so authorized? Well, I'll just tell you what Prabhupada told us. He said that in the nighttime, when he sleep, Krishna comes to him and dictates the purports and the translation for the next day. So as he's translating from the original Sanskrit, He'll say, oh, Krishna told me to put this, you know, to itself. Krishna told me to write this about this, translate this way, and explain it this way. And you could say, well, anybody could say God talks to them. Even, uh, what's his name, Berkowitz, Sammy the son, whatever his name, and the killer. You know, the guy who was going around killing people, son of Sam. He said that the dog spoke to him. So anybody could tell you anybody says anything. But you got to look at the results. The result is, Prabhupada's version of the Bhagavad Gita is the most used literary scriptural book throughout universities, throughout any study groups, any research societies who want to research Eastern philosophy or anything to do with that, they always go to Prabhupada's version first. They always check Prabhupada's version because it's a very good translation. And what's another important aspect? Well, Bhagavad Gita really deals with devotion to Krishna, it deals with devotion to God. And what happens in that version of the Bhagavad Gita, what happens in every version of the Bhagavad Gita, if you look at the original Sanskrit, is that Krishna is telling Arjun that the reason I'm dropping this science on you is because you are my dear friend and you are my devotee. So he doesn't just say, um, you're a learned man, or you're a good warrior, or you're an excellent lover and father to your wife and, and, and kids. He doesn't say none of that. He doesn't say, I'm giving you the science because you're wealthy and you're a king and you're going to rule the new world. Nah, man. Krishna told him that you're my friend and my devotee. 
If you particularly look at the last chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, he specifically gives us instructions to abandon all religion. The same vibration that people are feeling right now. You know, so many people are abandoning religion, but they're doing it in absence of God. You can abandon religion because religion is man-made. It's a bunch of philosophy, but you cannot do anything in the absence of God. So that's why Krishna then said, abandon all forms of religion. But then he said, simply surrender to me. So he didn't just leave you out there and say, abandon all forms of religion and go pick up the Heineken bottle, go pick up the crack pipe. He didn't say that. He said, abandon all forms of religion and surrender to me. Okay, understand, just like your hand is a part of your body, if your hand does not surrender to the will of your mind or your intellect or your soul, then the hand will do things that will get you in trouble. We don't have to go into examples. It could be something as simple as killing a cow. Your hand, if your hand has a brain of its own and it's serving itself, it causes chaos and havoc within the whole body. So all of us innumerable living entities, look at the trees the birds and you see one tree right there right but inside that one tree there's potentially billions of living entities bugs ants termites birds snails toads hedgehogs down at the root one tree it looks like one tree but it has so many parts and parcels to it <laughs> And if those parts and parcels work in harmony, then everything is good. But as soon as those parts and parcels become destructive, then it's time for them to be erased for the health of the greater organism. So that's what we're dealing with when you say, why is this bag of Gita authorized as what's so special about it? Well, simple. It's touched by God. It's purified. In that version of the bag of Gita, excuse me, y'all. In that version of the Bhagavad Gita, I think Prabhupada might have been the first one to really explain the universal form of the Lord called Virat Rupa. Because there's a lot of people that don't accept God as a personal person. They say he's the all, he's ambiguous. Meanwhile, Krishna himself in the Bhagavad Gita says, he gives, he gives Arjuna so many recommendations and he tells him the end result. He said, sure, I think he says, Mam Ekam. I don't, I don't know all the language. I got to go, you know, study that. I think he says, Mom, Ekam, so you're going to come to me. Surely, he tells Arjun more than once, surely if you do this, that, 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 you will come to me. Those who worship demigods will go to the demigods. Those who worship spirits and ghosts will go to the planets of the spirits and the ghosts. Those who worship their ancestors will go to the planet of the ancestors. But those who worship me, surely they will come to me. He didn't say surely they will come to an ambiguous form and exist in a spiritual cloud as a puff of smoke eternally in a state of nirvana. No, I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for direct relationship with a person or persons where I can give something and receive something or receive something and give something. That's the whole ebb and flow of life. So Krishna is telling you, you're coming to me, a person. I'm, you're not coming to some ambiguous um, thought form. We're not, we're not, it, listen, impersonalism is a tragedy. It does not, it does not provide any satisfaction for the living entity. If you see a flower, what you want to do next with the flower? You want to smell the flower. And then after you smell the flower, you want to offer the flower to your beloved. Whether it's your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your god, your demons, your deities. You want to use that flower in a practical manner. You don't just look at the flower and appreciate the beauty and just be like, it's a flower. And you start pulling off the petals and throwing it to the blowing wind because God is everywhere. So in this bag of Agita, he explains the Virat Rupa or the universal form. And he also shows something interesting about Krishna. In the form of time, Krishna is consuming all living entities. That's where you get the science of Kala Chakra, the wheel of time. Kala is time. Kala is time. And in the form of time, he's devouring. Arjuna was shocked because he said, I could see all the living entities, the saints, the demons, the angels, the priests, the low lowlifes, the high lowlifes. Everybody's running into your mouths in the form of time and you're just chomping them all down. So the baddest man is still going to succumb to the force of time in the form of Krishna. He is Vasu. He is the dwelling. Deva. Devaha means everywhere. 
So Vasudeva is dwelling everywhere. And in this version, he goes, he really goes into the Virat Rupa and explains how it works and what form of God that is. You don't really want to know that form of God because it's not, it's not to your nature. Your nature is more of dealing with a person, not a person who's everywhere and doing everything and his molecules are in the flag and in the atoms and they, hey, they got a lot going on. Now they got the Mandela effect, you know, that's a whole another thing. And quantum effects, they're doing so much with that Large Hadron Collider that in about 20 years, life as we know it is going to be totally different. But that's another subject too. So that's, I hopefully answered the first question. Why is this bag of Agita different? Hey, it's authorized. People around the world are using it for study and research. So it got to be something to it. Because if Krishna is all attractive, then any philosophy based upon his true teachings, any, any, any information, any sound, any food is also going to, any person is also going to be very, very attractive. So that right there is a sign that the attractiveness of Bhagavad Gita as it is, as opposed to other versions, remember other versions were translated by philosophers, people who don't have a vested interest in Krishna. I'm not listening to people, yo, you'd be surprised, like, there was a time when I could watch YouTube videos endlessly by this philosopher, that philosopher, that philosopher. Now, hardly none of them attract me because I, all I notice is I, I could have a very good air for speculation. And to me, speculation is BS. I'm tired of people saying, I think or I feel. I don't care about how you think and I really don't care about how you feel, except if your feelings need to be repaired. But man, I don't care about what people think or, or their opinions. That, don't, that does nothing for me. It does something for people who are still on that vibration. Speculation does nothing for me. So think that way. Second question. <laughs> You had said, this is a nice question. You had said, well, why is the Bhagavad Gita given so much importance as opposed to the Mahabharat from which it came? First of all, Mahabharat is two words, Maha Bharata. Maha is great, greater, Bharata is India. And we're talking about a time when the Mahabharata was fought, 3100 BCE, according to the Vedic teachings. Right, because I don't see any corroboration for this in the African systems or the South American systems verbally. I don't see any verbal corroboration, but that doesn't mean that it's not in their artwork and it's not in the metal nature. But apparently, the whole planet was called Bharatvarsha. And Bharatvarsha, so when you're speaking about the history of Greater India or the Mahabharat, you're actually speaking about the history of the whole world, the whole sphere, as opposed to just a small tract of land called India. So this Mahabharat, now this is confirmed. Yeah, you got some nice butterflies out here. Yeah, as you can tell, I'm not in Queens. I ain't going to go into where I'm at, but um, I ain't in Queens. Um, Far from home, brother. Um. And lost my thought being silly. The Mahabharat, this, this history of greater India in 3100 BCE was the most devastating and greatest world war ever known to man. It was fought in 3100 BCE and they corroborated that in Egypt because they also had the battle for unification of Upper and Lower Kemet at the same time. So at that war, about 1 billion people were killed during the Mahabharat War. But you said, why is it that the Bhagavad Gita is given so much special place? Well, simple. The Bhagavad Gita is the essence of the Mahabharat. Mahabharat is known as Itihasa. It has happened thus. So it is a historical book. Historical. It is not mythology as modern Indians pronounce it. And it's not mythology as Western speculators pronounce it. It is Itihasa. It has happened thus. It has happened thus and therefore it is repeated thus. And it has been written thus after 3100 BCE when the pen and the writing was developed with the help of people like Vyasa Dave, a.k.a. Jihuti or Thoth. Okay, good. Look these names up now. So you want to know why is it that the Bhagavad Because the Bhagavad Gita was spoken directly by Krishna. Whereas the Itihasa, the Mahabharat, which is like the greatest epic known to man, one of the biggest books on the planet Earth is the Mahabharat. And out of that, the essence was when Krishna was on the battlefield talking to Arjuna about the meaning of life, the science of the super soul or God, the science of the soul which is me and you, the person, the Jiva Atma, the science of time, the science of karma, 
and the science of nature. So Krishna was talking about those five subjects basically to Arjun, which was the, the concentrated juice, the pulp of the orange, which was called Mahabharat. So the pulp of everything was put into the 18 chapters of the Bhagavad Gita. One time Lord Shiva's wife, Parvati, asked him about the greatest, the greatness of the Bhagavad Gita. And in addition, one thing that Prabhupada always points out is that everything that's found in all of the other scriptures and all of the other religions of the world can be found in the Bhagavad Gita. Everything. But there's things that's in the Bhagavad Gita that can't be found in no other religion and no other scripture, no other philosophy. The Quran tells you, Allahu Akbar. Islam tells you, Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest. Yes, but the Bhagavad Gita tells you how great Allah is. So that's the difference, okay? Lord Shiva, in answering his wife, composed something called Gita Mahatmya. And in the Gita Mahatmya, it's explaining the greatness of the Bhagavad Gita. And Lord Vishnu himself told Lord Shiva, he said, first of all, of the 18 chapters, of the Bhagavad Gita the first five chapters are my five heads the next ten chapters are my ten arms the sixteenth chapter is my belly and the last two chapters are my lotus feet as a matter of fact anybody who reads the last two chapters of the Bhagavad Gita daily you automatically have the requirements to become an Indra meaning after you give up this body and not necessarily after you give up this body either you can be promoted while in this body but you know I don't I'm not gonna go into that but you can definitely be promoted but definitely after you give up this body a lot of people unknowingly just by chance and Hare Krishna they have so much qualifications that even if they don't make it to the highest abode their next life is gonna be absolutely fabulous either on an earthly planetary system or a heavenly planetary system that's not even the spiritual world we talking about but you know that's not the goal the goal is just actually love of God whether you're in the spiritual or material world that's the ultimate goal but Lord Vishnu basically told Shiva why the Bhagavad Gita is so special because the different chapters represent the different parts of his body and as you know in the Vedic system or the Hindu system or whatever close everything close to it they always worship the feet first if somebody comes and touches your feet they're basically putting all of their sinful energy on you and trying to get your blessings. And to ground it out, you touch their head. So you give them a blessing and you also don't have to suffer the repercussions of their sinful energy from touching your feet. So there's a whole lot to it. But yeah, those, those 18 chapters are the essence of everything that was being taught in the Mahabharata. And if you look at the Mahabharata videos, especially when Bhishma, Grand Sire Bhishma was laying on a bed of nails for like nearly 18 days. Not a bed of nails, a bed of arrows. He was dropping mad gems of wisdom. And if you want the conglomeration of all of that wisdom, it's right there in the Bhagavad Gita. Srimad Bhagavad Gita. So yes, there's a reason why the Bhagavad Gita is special outside of the Mahabharata itself. And I recommend you study both. And the last question was Vyasadeva and Ganesh beautiful subject you asked is there any separate veneration for the act because this is what happened basically Vyasa Dave when humanity has started to become dumbed down around 3100 BCE when Kali Yuga was about to begin Vyasa Dave said man we need a writing system and we need we need a writing system to record all of this ancient knowledge because People don't even remember what they did last Tuesday, much less are they going to remember an entire scripture like the Bhagavad Gita or the Srimad Bhagavatam. They ain't going to remember no Metu Neta. They ain't going to remember no Emerald Tablets. So they had to invent a writing system. This is where the deities from different systems correlate because Vyasadeva is known as the literary incarnation of God. And therefore, Ganesh, as the servant who actually, or the, let me say devotee, all right? Because when you say servant, like some people get, get it twisted. They be like, oh, you're offensive. You disrespected Lord Shiva by calling him a servant of Krishna. And they, they, they don't realize, man. Listen, there's only one boss. There's only one boss. You see, the only cause for Balaram, or the only source for Balaram or Baladev, Krishna's brother, is Krishna. 
But Krishna has no source or origin. So everything is Krishna's servant. Everything. Don't, don't let nobody twist you up. Everything is a servant of God. Whether willingly or unwillingly. Alright? But check it out, man. Ganesha is like the pen of God. Because he sacrificed a part of himself. Broke off his tusk, man. And turned it into a pen. And wrote down whatever came out of Vyasadeva's mouth. So Vyasadeva is Krishna in his form of dropping that knowledge for our benefit. And Ganesha is the instrument. Also, in Egypt, you had Thoth, who was known. He has he's an ibis, so his thing his thing looks like Ganesha's um tusk, but backwards, reverse. And he's also known as the creator of all writing systems and the pen. Matter of fact, Bobby Hemet said that in the ancient world, whenever people needed to get their language written down they will go to ancient Kemet and in ancient Kemet they will form a written language for whatever your spoken language was it all kind of correlates you know what I mean because around 3100 BCE we went from memory to writing to books so in enlisting the help of Ganesha to write down this stuff Vyasa Dave asked Ganesha to write Ganesha was like yeah I'll write it down but yo once you start talking don't stop talking. I don't know if Ganesha was busy or he just, like me, like when I work, I like to get into the mode. I like to listen to certain music. I like to get into a zone. Then I can really work very fast and efficiently. But like a, a lot of stopping and starting or giving me different assignments while I'm working, yo, I hate that. I hate that, man. Because I, I end up forgetting what I was originally doing or the technique that I had developed and then everything gets destroyed. So I like when I start working on something, let me just work, man. Just, just facilitate my work and I'll get it done perfectly. But if you're going to confuse me or stop and start, I don't like that. So Ganesha was obviously on some similar vibration. He told him, listen, once you start talking, don't stop talking. Vyasadeva said, yes, no problem. But once I start talking, you don't start writing until you understood what I just said. And that's another thing I like about the Vedic system. Is so many checks and balances to a, to the atomic level. Krishna didn't just come to this planet Earth and perform his pastimes whimsically, whims, whimsically, even though he could have because he's God and he could do what the heck he want. But a certain amount of billion years before Krishna comes to the planet Earth, Krishna comes to the planet Earth every 8.64 billion years, which when actually it's every 4.32 billion years you can see him because he comes once in a day of Brahma and every 4.32 billion years is Brahma's 12 hours. So remember, Brahma is only active during the 12 hours of the daytime of the universe. The 12 hours of the nighttime of the universe is sleep. Water fills up the universe past the middle, terry pla middle planetary system and all the way up approaching the heavenly planetary systems. There's water in the, the bottom two thirds of the cosmos for eight point for 4.32 billion years, which is the nighttime of the universe when Lord Brahma is asleep. But the other 4.32 billion years, Krishna always makes a stop in his original form. He's always coming here like the waves of the sea, but we're talking about in his original cowherd or black boy form, that's the form he comes, right? And how did I lose my thought? Let me rewind. Well, anyway, let's just jump back into Ganesha and Vyasa Dave. So, Vyasa Dave, as the literary incarnation of Krishna, started speaking the words of the Vedas so that Ganesha could write it down. And you ask, well, do we have a separate veneration? I do know that at the Hare Krishna temples, for the appearance of Vyasa Dave or his so called birthday, they always have something called an Abhishek ceremony in which you take auspicious chemicals like honey and ghee and yogurt and jaggery, original raw sugar. You take fruit juices. Um, I think I mentioned milk. So you, you take all of these auspicious oils and substances and you bathe his deity with it. And after you bathe the deity with it and wash it off with purified water, then you actually drink those substances. They're called Abhishek. And they do some amazing things to your physical and spiritual health. But yes, Abhishek is very, very important. And we do have a system by which we honor Lord Vyasa Dave. I, I just feel unfortunate that I lost my thought. You know what I mean? I was talking to you about Krishna arriving in his original form on this planet 
every eight billion years i was i was really trying to drop something but if it comes back to me i'll put it in the description box so yes we do or honor lord vyasa dave we do honor him and i'm sure the hindus have their own system for honoring vyasa dave as well as ancient chemet the only difference is that the ancient chemet comedic religion is dead for the most part all of the mystery schools were closed when the european people had came into egypt and conquered it as a matter of fact it wasn't until the 25th dynasty when the ancestors of the ancient Egyptians, the Nubians, came down. I said down, even though they were traveling north. They came down the Nile River and re-established Kemetic civilization. That was the last gasp for the great black civilizations of the ancient days. And yes, I said great black, great Ethiopians. People can argue what you want, but it was the European Socrates who traveled the world and when he got back to Europe they swarmed him and said yo please tell us about these great black civilizations that you encountered and he said of the great black civilizations there's two great black civilizations the Ethiopians and the Eastern Ethiopian so he was describing India and he was describing Africa and at that time those were great civilizations don't let nobody tell you that you don't have no history or you never contributed nothing to this planet Earth. Those same people are filling out job applications to learn how to fix traffic lights that black people invented. They're learning how to fix refrigerators and elevators that black people invented. They're learning how to, you know, the street sweeper, that, that machine where you got to do your alternate parking. Yeah, black people invented that too. There's so many patents that black people have invented. But of course, white companies got the credit because Ford and them boys were slave owners. All of these GE and general, everything that's big right now, pretty much if you big in America, it was slave money. Johnson & Johnson, slave money. Um, and even if you had clean money, if you got money now off of the corrections corporations facility, like Walmart, oh, they get so much money off of slave labor. Um, Verizon, slave labor money. McDonald's and McDonald's, man, they have people tearing off the sign made in Taiwan. And replacing it with made in the USA. So stuff that you're buying with your patriotic pride, you're still supporting slavery. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. If, the, if anything was not clear or I didn't touch on subjects properly, please, please, please just drop the comments. Drop the questions. And I hope that everybody's all blessed. And as usual, I beg you in this age of Kali Yuga to please chant the Mahavakya. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.